Well, it's time to construct our orthocenter, concurrency point of the altitudes. If you've forgotten your definition, an altitude is drawn from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. In the case of an obtuse triangle, to the extension of the side. I'm going to start with this one, drawn from vertex B, perpendicular to the opposite side AC. So let's set up our compass. I'm going to put the needle on the B, right there, and I'm going to swing this random arc. Now, I know what I, I did set it up so it goes through A. You don't have to use A, but all you, or what you do need, are one, two points of intersection that are equidistant from point B. Okay, so let's, let's take it from there. Now, I'm going to put the needle of my compass on one of those points of intersection, swing it through the other. See, I only need this, I kind of swing down here. That's where I'm expecting my other intersection. Picking up the needle, placing it here. I swing, set my compass to swing through this point. Again, it doesn't have to be point A. Just doing, it looks like half the perpendicular bisector construction. Really, because it just about is. What you're doing is you're constructing a perpendicular to a line, or segment in this case, from a point not on the segment. That's a construction you can find many references to. But I'm going to draw this perpendicular bisector, I'm sorry, not perpendicular bisector, this perpendicular line, and I'll leave the segment portion here solid, and you can see I lined up my straight edge here and here, well, that point of intersection. So there you go, that's one of the two altitudes. Let's get another one. I'm going to go for the vertex. A has an altitude drawn perpendicular to BC. So again, my handy dandy compass there. Now, again, I'm setting it passing through point B. Doesn't have to, but it's easier in this particular case. And I've got my two points right there. And I'm going to set my compass up like that. Swing it through there, and I'm looking for an intersection out here. Reposition the compass here, and I'm going to swing through right there. Ah, oh, like that. So now you see we again have two points. See, A was equidistant from these two points because that's what the orange arc gave us. And now this intersection is also equidistant from these two points. Therefore, we have our second altitude. Line up your straight edge there. This portion I'll call the altitude, and the rest were just the construction. The line containing the altitude. We'll say it that way. And now let's move on to our third and final. And again, I need to swing a compass. I'm swinging to, through these two random, well, big gap on this compass. I'm swinging through the A and I'm getting another intersection there. So I've got two points of intersection. One is here, one is here. Big gap on this one. So let's um, take our compass, spread it out so we can go through this point of intersection out over here. And again, you might be getting lost in all these swings but I do want you to save your compass swings. Maybe you could use colored pencils. That might be helpful. Um, some students um, do these very faint and then um, maybe do the, do the lines dark and different colors. A lot of things you can do. Use your imagination. Be creative. I'm going to put the needle here. I'm going to swing through the other point. And now look what you've got. Wow. You've got point C equidistant from AB, and you've got this intersection equidistant from AB. So all you've got to do is draw your remaining altitude. So these three points, these or these three lines, in this case, it happens that the segments meet here. They are going to be meeting at this point called the orthocenter. And that should do it for your construction. And I think I'll link from this one, we'll do another construction where the triangle is obtuse. Then the orthocenter would be outside of the figure.